to worship today is going to require you to participate as well as myself. So if you would recite the bold print when it comes your time. Holy is our God who calls us to worship in holiness. Mighty is our God who calls us to lead courageously and to follow faithfully. Loving is our God who calls us to live lives of service and love. Creative is our God invites us to imagine a world where love reigns. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You join me as we recite the opening prayer. Shepherding God, lead us in the way you would have us go. Lead us into your presence this day. Guide us in our time of worship. Let us hear your word and answer your call. Help us to imagine the people of God caring and sharing your love in the world. In your light, in your truth, we pray. Amen. Please stand this morning as we sing our hymn of praise, Jesus, Thine All-Victorious Love. Our affirmation is from Romans 8, chapter, uh, verse 35, 37 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation of dis or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or soul, sword? People. In, In all, all things, things we are more than conquerors, conquerors through the, the one, one who loves us. us. We are we sure that neither death, death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor, nor things present, present nor, things nor things to come, come nor powers, powers, nor heights, or, nor, nor death, nor anything, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God Christ in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. It's on page 15 of your pew Bible if you want to follow along or review the passage on the screen. The kingdom of heaven is like the treasures hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy and he goes and sells them all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the word of God. Thanks. Thanks. God.
All right, good morning, y'all. Today, we are going to talk about roots. Um, there are all kinds of roots. Go ahead, Tyler. Tree roots. Tree roots. There are tree roots, and I'm going to talk to you about some, uh, Austin, excuse me, and I'm going to talk to you about some tree roots. Um, most of the time, roots are dirty and hard to deal with. One tree root that I discovered when I moved here that grow in my yard and I can't stand them are hackberry roots. Um, I've never had to deal with them until I moved here. Um, but roots are also very important. Can you tell me why? They help trees grow. They help trees grow. They help uh, plants grow. And of course they, need, they bring the water and food to the plant um, so they'll grow. Uh, there are plants that I was reading about last night, some in the desert that have roots that grow 40 feet deep um, in search of water. And then there is a tree I read about in South Africa um, that has roots that have grown 400 feet deep. So it's pretty amazing. Um, one root that y'all have probably seen before and it's actually quite pretty is a carrot. Um, do y'all like carrots? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do too. There's, there's a place here in town that has some that are fantastic. Um, like H-E-B, -E they're good. I, that there's a place that puts sugar and all kinds of stuff on them at a buffet here in town. A lot of people probably know what I'm talking about. Um, the D Bible tells us that when you put your faith in Christ, you are being rooted and grounded in love. Um, it's amazing to think of ourselves being rooted and grounded in love. God's love provides nourishment for us, and we are given all we need to flourish and grow. Uh, the Bible also teaches us that God's love is at work with us, is powerful, and is able to accomplish far more than we can ever ask or imagine. Yes, sir. Um, at, in California, I found a root that was pink and so strong, when I pulled it out, like dirt flew all over the place. Oh, yeah, they, they are. That's kind of like the hackberries. <laughs> all right. Um, they can be tough. Yeah. All right, well, let's pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for your love and nourishment that allows us to grow. Amen. All right. So y'all know the routine? Yep. Each grab three and give two away. Two and give three away. I don't like beef either. Oh, okay. Well, you can give them away then. I'd like to invite you into a time of personal prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks this beautiful Sunday morning where, that we can gather here in your house to praise your name, to experience your love, to experience you in this room. We are so grateful that you have called us here today, and we pray that you will help us to hear your word, to hear your voice, to feel your touch, and to be transformed by your love, and let us be changed by what you do in us today and let the world be transformed by what you 
do through us when we leave this place. We are so grateful, O oh God, for all the blessings that you have poured down upon us. We are so grateful for the freedoms we have, for the love that we share, for the opportunity to serve you in our world. Even as we praise you, O oh God, there are so many concerns that we have. Some are on our hearts that are unspoken. Some um, we all know about. We all, but all of them are known to you. And we are so grateful that you know our hearts and you know our deepest longings. And you care for each one of us. Today we especially pray for those those soccer players in Thailand who are trapped in the cave, and we pray for those who are, who are preparing to rescue them, and we pray for the family of the man who, who passed away and his attempts to help rescue them this past week. And we pray for all those victims of natural disasters around the world. We pray for the victims of human disasters as well. And we pray for the victims of violence and for the victims of war. We pray for the children who have been separated from their parents along our border. And we pray that you will help speed the return of those children to their parents. And give us wisdom and grace as we seek to be people of compassion as well as people of law when we deal with people who try to come to our, our borders. Give us wisdom, O oh God. Give us mercy. Help us to be the people you have called us to be. We pray, O oh God, for the leaders of this nation, for the leaders of this state, for the leaders of this community of Cleburne. We pray that you will guide them, that they will seek you, truly seek you, and remember that your guiding principle is love. Let us all obey the command to love one another. We pray these things, O oh God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Where the Spirit of the Lord Is, number 2119 in the faith we sing.
Let us pray. Oh God, we're thankful for you being with us in this hour of worship. We have given of our tithes and our offerings to further your kingdom in this community and the world. Be with us as we continue in our worship today in your son's most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Katie. Our New Testament lesson comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There was a, a couple on their way to, the, to, the, to a justice of the peace to get married and they tragically died in a car accident on their way and when they got to the pearly gate St. Peter was there and and they asked St. Peter, Peter we were just about to get married, we've been looking forward to it for so long, is there any way that we can get married up here in heaven? 
And Peter said, well, we've never had that request before, but let me go find out. And so the couple waited, and, it, and the days turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into to months. And finally, Peter came back and said, okay, okay, we're ready. We, you can get married. We're ready for you. Come on, let's get, we're ready. Um, we got the pastor waiting. And, and the, the man said, well, wait a minute. Before we get married, I just have a question. Um, what if we don't like marriage? Can we get divorced? And Peter was furious. He threw down his clipboard on the ground and said, Why? You know, it took me three months to find a pastor in heaven. How long do you think it's going to take me to find a lawyer? <laughs> I apologize to any lawyers here. And I'm a little offended. Ben, um, Jack Browder gave that to me. And <laughs> Anyway, I might not be in heaven, but we'll see. Anyway, today, um, uh, there was, well, 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, there was a song that came out, a Christian song, it's probably one of the most popular Christian songs of the contemporary Christian era, which started back in the 70s. Um, I Can Only Imagine, do you know that song? I can, a lot of people love that song. It talks about this man who, who um, is wondering what heaven is going to be like, and I can only imagine, will I dance before you, Jesus, or will, um, will I not be able to move at all or say anything at all? And I think it's really nice to think about what heaven is going to be like, even though as a pastor I may not be there. But, um, <laughs> but it's nice to imagine the, um, what heaven would be like. And I think, you know, I, I feel a little bad because that song is all about what it's going to be like when, when the singer is in the presence of Jesus. And um, when I think about heaven, it's more like I want to see my parents again or my grandparents who I hardly knew because they died when I was young. You know, all my aunts and uncles that have passed away. There's all these people I want us to be reunited with in heaven. I probably should be thinking more like the singer of that song about, about what heaven is like with Jesus, what it's going to be like to be with Jesus. And while I think it's nice to think about what heaven will be like, I, I also think that, that God would also want us to think about what this world could be like, to imagine what this world could be like if we were really being who God wants us to be, if the whole world was being the way God wants the whole world to be, how different would, would the world be? Um, there's an a, a Old Testament his, um, scholar named Walter Brueggemann, who's probably the most respected Old Testament scholar of the 20th century, um, and now 21st century, he's now retired. Um, but he wrote a book back in the 70s called The Prophetic Imagination. And he, in it, he traces this um, trend that you can find in Scripture where God is asking the people to imagine a different world. He starts with Moses. Moses, of course, we know is, is the lawgiver. He went to, to, um, to Egypt to talk to Pharaoh, to, to encourage Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go, the people of Israel who had been enslaved there for several hundred years. And he said, let my people go. And finally, through all, after all these plagues, the people were able to leave and they were wandering through the wilderness and Moses gave the law. Actually, God gave the law to the people through Moses. Now, the law was not just a list of do's and don'ts for the sake of order. They were a list of, of things to let the people imagine what it would be like to be in a different world where the world, where the people of God actually did what God said to do. So a lot of the, the law is talking about justice, and a lot of the law is talking about how you treat your neighbor, how you treat the stranger, um, how you treat the poor among you. Um, from Deuteronomy, it says, uh, if you'll go to the next slide, Drew. <laughs> Wake up, Drew. If... <laughs> If you will only obey the Lord your God be, by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. 
Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. Blessed shall you be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. He's telling the people to imagine what the world will be like if you follow God. That there will be blessings, abundant blessings. There will be prosperity. There will be fruitfulness. There will be joy in the land if only you do what God commands. Brueggemann traces this on through, um, through the prophets uh, like Isaiah. And Isaiah, I believe this is chapter 43, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my prey. He's calling the people, Isaiah is calling the people to imagine what the world would be like, what the world would be like if they would obey God, if they loved the way that God commanded to love. It will be like streams in the wilderness and the dry desert. It will be something that feeds you, that feeds you physically and spiritually. It's a beautiful painting of words that um, that Isaiah preached to to the people of Israel who were often in despair. Now Jesus did the same kind of thing. He called the people to imagine the passages that that Sam read earlier. Um, He was really saying, asking people to imagine. The kingdom of God is like a treasure buried in a field that is so precious that you find it in the field and you go out and sell all you have so you can buy that field and have that treasure. Or a pearl of great price that you find in a store and you go and sell everything you have so you can go buy that pearl. That's what the kingdom... Imagine that the kingdom of God is something so precious that you would give everything you have to have it. Jesus is calling the people to imagine. That's what Paul is doing today in our our letter to to the Ephesians. He's asking the people of Ephesus to imagine. And it's not just to imagine to the best of their ability. It's to understand that God has a great imagination as well. If you'll go to the next, um, go to the next slide. The next slide, Drew. I ask him to strengthen you by a spirit, not by brute strength, but by a glorious inner strength. This is from the message, by the way. That Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet firmly planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Can you imagine the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love? Reach out and experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. I don't think that God is asking us to imagine the world that we would like, but to imagine what the world God would like. Because I think that what we want is a lot different, probably a lot less than what God has imagined for us. And, um, you know, I spent three weeks in Minnesota going to class, and one of the churches I went to, I found out a disturbing thing that they do at the annual conference in Minnesota. This, you never have to worry about me moving to Minnesota because they do this at their conference, and I, it scares me to death to think of having to do this. I don't know why. It shouldn't, but it does. Every year after, at the end of annual conference, they put all of the pastor's names, every pastor who was appointed that year, all the names into a bucket or a bowl or something, and they draw one name out, and the next year that person has to preach at the next annual conference to all the pastors in the conference, all the lay people in the conference. It scares me to death to think about that. Well, the, the person they, that drew, got the lucky 
that got his name drawn for this year was, was really good. I saw a part of his sermon. His name is Tyler Sit. He's an Asian-American um, young guy from... He's started a church recently in South Minneapolis called New City United Methodist Church. And exciting things are going on in this church. And it's, it's a very good um, sermon that he gave. But he talks about the forming of this church. It's a brand new church. He was called to be a church planter. And he and seven other people were gathered in a room one night when they started thinking about what kind of church they would like to be in Minneapolis. What kind of presence of God would they like to, to create? Or what, what, what do they believe God would try to create through them in Minneapolis? And... and so he asked the question, what would be, what would Minneapolis be if its only guiding principle was love? Not economics or not anything else, but love. How would Minneapolis look if it was run entirely based on love? And one person said, well, it would be a place where everyone of all economic, economic levels would feel safe because there are places in Minneapolis that people don't feel safe. Another one said, I envision all the leaders of the gangs, the violent gangs here in Minneapolis, that they would use those leadership skills in ministry instead of in violent ways. And another one said, what if, what, what if it was like um, Revelation 21 where where the new Jerusalem, what if Minneapolis was like the new Jerusalem descending from heaven and everyone was welcome and there was no more violence and the earth was restored? It was out of this dream, out of this imagining that new city church was, was formed. And they're doing wonderful work. I mean, they're, they're already, I think they opened in 2017 and they're already worshiping a couple of hundred every Sunday morning. Don't, don't even have their own space yet. They're work, meeting in another church. I wonder if we imagined how God would want Cleburne to be, or even just St. Mark. What if love was the guiding principle of Cleburne? What if love was truly the guiding principle of St. Mark? How would the church be different? How would the world be different? Because the church is different. What can we imagine that God would do? Knowing that God can do anything greater than anything we imagine. Who is it outside of these walls that we would welcome here? There are people hungry. I imagine us welcoming everyone here and introducing people to Jesus Christ and a relationship that people come into a relationship with us and with God and that lives be transformed and, and that people are fed and that people's lives are turned around and people are set free from addiction and people learn to love others who have a different colored skin or speak a different language or from a different country. That Jesus Christ is praised and that the word becomes flesh in all of the people here so that the world outside these walls will be transformed. You know, that's my imagination, but God's imagination is much better than that. The next three weeks, we're going to be talking about, based on the song that Katie just sang, Imagine the People of God. What does the people of God look like? Imagine what the people of God should be like in the world. Imagine what the world would be if all of the people, not just St. Mark, but every Christian, every church in Cleburne, if everyone was truly living out the gospel message to love God and to love one another. How would this world be different if our guiding principle was love? 
Amen.